Cause it's your girl Jade. <laughs> I sounded so cool this one. Some Jade. Okay, y'all. So as y'all read about the title, today's video is gonna be about unlearning toxic behaviors. I went on Instagram and basically asked, like, what did y'all want me to talk about? And my friend said toxic behavior, but I feel like to talk about toxic behavior as a whole would take like a long, long, long time because you could be toxic in friendships, relationships, family, like I feel like that was too much. So I just broke it down to unlearning toxic behaviors. And I don't want nobody to feel like I'm judging in this video because whether you want to accept it or not, we all the toxic person in somebody's story. We all have been toxic in one way or another, whether it's to ourselves or to somebody else. And honestly, everything I'm talking about, I've done before or I'm still learning to not do. So don't ever think y'all are alone in this because... We all toxic, if we're being honest. We just trying to find our way out here. So, let's get into the video. Okay, y'all. Um, first of all, I just got over being sick. So, if my voice is a little annoying, I'm sorry. Bear with me. I'm trying to put out content. And second of all, isn't my hair so cute, y'all? Like, I feel like I look like a little girl or like a little poodle. But it's just like so cute to me. Because my skin clear. It's like, mm-hmm. Anyways, it's not about me. This one thing I would say to encourage all the people that like watching this and feel like, dang, I'm really getting toxic. I'm trying to, you know, do better. I used to be, I used to be, I used to be very, 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 very toxic to myself and to others. And I feel like in a matter of a year, I came a long way just by doing some of these things I'm finna tell y'all. So, I'm not saying everybody's situation is the same everybody different you know i'm just letting you know like you're capable of changing no matter how long you've been that way no matter how messed up you were no matter how many mistakes you made you can always shake back don't let nobody make you feel bad for shaking back either but anyways let's get into it <laughs> okay first of all if you want to stop being toxic you cannot be afraid to go ahead and battle your past okay this can be a problem for a lot of people because it's like especially as a black child in order to deal with our traumas sometimes we just forget it you know like you sometimes told like whatever happened in this house stays in this i wasn't told that i'm just letting y'all know the narrative that i've heard and i've seen okay a lot of times black people like to cover up the issues in the family and like Make you feel like your trauma shouldn't be spoken on. But in reality, like, it's nothing wrong with getting counseling. But I wasn't comfortable enough to do that. I literally just sat in my room, thought about every time, like, somebody in my family had lied to me. Every time I was disappointed by something that happened in my childhood. Like, I just had to sit there and think of, why am I finna cry? Get together. I just had to think about all of that and just understand the effects it had on me and just deal with it, like. Sometimes you had to cry. Sometimes you got to journal through it. Sometimes you just had to sit there and pray. And I feel like eventually you get better. Like, you really do get better. <laughs> okay, y'all. I had to get it together. It's too early to be crying on the internet. I just made this page. I can't do that. So, <laughs> the uh, first piece of advice I would give to somebody that's trying to unlearn toxic behavior or get rid of some toxic traits within themselves is... Do not underestimate your environment. The stuff you grew up around, the stuff you, you know, the gender roles you saw as a child, the household you live in and how things work, that all has an effect on the type of people you attract later on in life. Like, for me, I always saw my mama being strong. I always saw my mama providing. I always saw my mama picking up the pieces, putting stuff back together, even when stuff wasn't her fault. So I've seen in my older life, I attract a lot of people I'm not trying to be rude, but have mama issues. So I end up being the one that's nurturing. I end up being the one that, you know, try to provide for them, help them out, da, 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 all that. And that's not to bash nobody or be like, oh, I ain't never been in a relationship with a good guy. It's just saying, like, uh, what we attract does have a lot to do with what we deal with as children. You feel me? So, in my honest opinion, before you even think about being in a relationship with somebody else or bringing somebody else into the picture, you have to heal the picture that you're in. You have to be like, okay, this is what I grew up seeing, but this is what I'm not going to deal with. These are my boundaries. Okay, even though I'm in a household where everybody mistreating each other and doing this and doing that, I'm not going to take that on the person I love. I'm going to be the type of person to be like this, this, and this. Like, you literally... 
I had to write it down. I had to write down what kind of man I wanted to attract. I had to write down the fact I'm not going to keep attracting guys that I have to take care of. I'm not going to keep attracting guys that just see how smart I am, get intimidated, and try to tear me down. Like, you literally have to just sit there and evaluate some stuff before you even pull people into the picture. Because when you just go adding people to the picture, whether it's friends, relationship-wise, or anything, that's when you become toxic because you start taking out the bad habits you've been around and picked up out on them, if that makes sense. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, y'all. Um, this let me just say this video more so goes towards the relationship standpoint because it's like obviously you're gonna make friends at school and stuff. You're not just gonna be like, Oh, I can't be friends with you because I have a bad household. You know, most of the time those are friends that become your day ones, they know what you're going through and all that other stuff. So it's like some friends are just gonna have to see their toxic side. Like I hate to say that, but the closest people to me saw me very, very toxic. And we've all seen each other toxic. And I honestly feel like it pulled us closer together, like, even through the bed. Like, in life, it's inevitable to just not be toxic to anybody, if I'm being completely honest. Because we all have bad days. We all have bad habits. So, yeah. That's all I had to say about that. Because I don't want anybody to be confused. Okay, one of the habits I picked up because of trauma and pain, I self-sabotaged a lot. And a lot of people do this. Like, I see posts that be like, uh-uh, my life too good, so I'm finna go wrong, da-da-da-da-da. And a lot of times we be thinking that kind of stuff is a joke. But in reality, like, that becomes, like, a real issue in relationships. Like, as soon as I used to become too happy or feel like I was following somebody... For <sighs> talk as soon as i got too happy or feel like i was falling for somebody hard i was like oh no he finna see how much i like him he finna change completely he finna start using me da, da, da. and you have to realize like in some instances that's really your intuition talking and you right but in other instances sometimes you just overthinking because of what you've been through and what you've seen and you can't do that because then you're gonna start you know, acting funny towards them and going back to what you used to. Like, no, nah, I'll just deal with my ex again because I don't got time to be hurt again. I like this boy way more than my ex. He going to hurt me. He going to... You can't be doing all that overthinking and putting yourself in a bad position off of scenarios. Like, overthinking is a bad one, too, like, that a lot of people deal with. And it's like, it's not something that you're going to hear from overnight you know like you gotta pray about it you gotta really just tell yourself like i'm worthy of being happy i could be happy without somebody playing me i could be happy without being manipulated you know what i'm saying like you can't always be so quick to be like no my life is full of pain this ain't for me because that's where you mess up and start being toxic to yourself and others Period. okay <laughs> it's time for me to come for the men now because y'all know this is what i do <laughs> This is a bad habit I see in a lot of men, but I've also done it myself, so I'm not bashing nobody. <sighs> it's a lack of accountability nowadays. Like, it's bad. Like, it's like everybody say they want a relationship, but then when they get in a relationship and somebody address the issue with them, all they know how to do is turn the issue around on the other person. And whether y'all want to accept it or not, that's toxic. That's very manipulative. Like, a lack of accountability in a relationship is very draining. It makes one person feel like they're trying to put their all into it and fix the issues and the other person just getting by and don't want to take no blame for anything. And don't get me wrong, it's really not about blame. It's about you and the person being mature enough to fix y'all issues. But at the end of the day, if nobody ever takes the blame for any issues, how are they going to be fixed? You feel what I'm saying? Okay. And something that ties into this topic that I really, really want to speak on I hate the freaking phrase, oh, I'm only human, I'm not perfect. Let me tell y'all from a female standpoint how that feels. It feels like a fucking, mm, don't cuss. <laughs> it feels like a freaking slap in the face when somebody said it. Especially when you sitting there trying to talk through the issue with them. And that's all they got to say. Because it's like, think about it. Think about it, man. Because y'all got this bad. If somebody is sitting there trying to help you understand what you're doing wrong, is that them saying you're supposed to be perfect or is that them trying to help you better yourself? Okay, y'all. Um, so at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is please stop using that phrase because if somebody was saying you were supposed to be perfect 
or you weren't supposed to have any issues, the minute you messed up, they would have left. What they're trying to do is care for you and correct you. And without correction or any change, a relationship will not grow. So don't be toxic to yourself by not allowing yourself to be corrected and to the other person by showing them that you don't care enough to be corrected. Period. <laughs> Okay, the next thing that's like a trauma response that's very toxic to yourself that I see a lot of people come to that I actually was dealing with at one point is not being able to set healthy boundaries and becoming a people pleaser because of the fact that like you don't want to be alone. Okay, let me just say one thing. If your self-love is not where it's supposed to be, anytime you're in a relationship, you're going to be used. Like... Yes, you have some guys that see like, oh, her self-esteem low, let me build her up. But some dudes, if they already doing you wrong and they see you just putting up with it and going with the flow just because you don't want to be alone, they going to play on that. Like, y'all got to understand people that take advantage and people that are takers, they going to continue to take. They don't just wake up one day like, uh, I think I'm going to stop using her for her money. I think I'm going to stop using her for sex. Like, no, it's up to you to love yourself and respect yourself enough to say, hey, I ain't dealing with this no more. I got to go. Okay, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, I see this habit a lot more in females because I feel like we battle with our intuition and being a loyal person. We feel like, oh, if I stick around for him just a little while longer, he going to wake up. He going to do better, da, 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 da. And truth be told, sis, a man that really loved you wouldn't put you in a position where you had to choose between him and your boundaries. He would respect your boundaries. If anything, he would teach you how to build up better boundaries. You feel what I'm saying? So the main way to unlearn this habit, in my opinion, is realizing that nothing good comes from being with somebody that doesn't respect your boundaries or expects you to be a yes man. <laughs> If you're going to get left with somebody stronger than you because they realize, like, you're not mature at all and you just letting them run over you. Or you going to stay until you losing your mind and you just sick of being mistreated and you realize you stuck around for so long for somebody that wasn't even interested in changing. And you're going to come out a lot more damaged than you were even coming in. So it's like you have to love yourself to the max. Like... When I say to the max, to the max, before you even think about, you know, being in a relationship because people are manip them. People are manipulative and they will play on your issues hard. Okay, y'all. This the last thing I'm gonna speak on about like unlearning toxic behaviors. Um this is a lot of people's response to being hurt, honestly. It's shutting down, basically. Sitting on your issues, saying, you know what? I ain't going to let nobody hurt me again. I'm not finna let myself get in a position to be hurt again. Da, da. Just basically becoming numb. In my opinion, that's not hurting nobody but you. You might feel like you're protecting yourself, but in reality, that's only blocking you from better people and better opportunities to experience love or happiness in life. Okay. And hear me out when I'm saying this. Hear me out. It's a scripture that says the pain you feeling right now will not compare to the joy you will experience later on. I don't exactly know what scripture it is. I ain't no preacher. I'm just letting y'all know what the Bible say. So, so it's like, yes, I understand relationships can hurt. People betraying you can hurt. But it's like, if you train your mind to always be on guard and be like, you know what? No, no more friends, no more relationships, no more getting close to people. When you finally do run into a good person that want to love you or you finally run into a good friend that really got your back, you're not going to know how to handle them. That's just my honest opinion. That's what I've seen. Like, people that deal with their issues by having an I don't give a fuck attitude and basically being like nonchalant, like, oh, I don't need nobody, da da da. Like, that's cool to, you know, be comfortable being alone. But in the day, I feel like everybody needs somebody. If nobody needed anybody, what would be the point of relationship? What would be the point of friendship? What would be the point of family? You feel what I'm saying? Y'all, I kid you not, when you do this, you're going to continue to run into people that put you through the same things until you learn your lesson and sit there and deal with what you've been through. Like, y'all, the younger ones that's watching this, I really hope y'all taking what I'm saying into consideration, y'all, because you might think, like, it's kept, but I'm telling you, life will literally make you deal with the pain you have inside. It will make you. So you might as well just be strong enough to say, you know what, I'm done running from my emotions. I'm done running from my problems. I'm done letting stuff weigh me down and treat myself like I'm not human. 
you got to sit there and be like, okay, even though this hurts really bad, I hate to revisit this. I'm going to sit here and heal so that I could be happy and so that I don't let what somebody else did to me hold me back from experiencing the best life I can have. Okay, y'all, as I wrap this up, let me just say, like, in order to stop being toxic, you're going to have to be open to healing. You're going to have to be open to realizing some of the things you went through you could have avoided if you would have just loved yourself a little more. You have to be open to forgiving some people that may not even be sorry. They may not have even asked for your forgiveness. And you also have to respect yourself enough to not return to situations that broke you. And I'm not going to say any of this is easy, but through giving yourself time, growing yourself love, growing yourself as a person, it becomes easier. And then once you do all that, you have better energy on you. You attract better people. You're going to have better friends. You're going to attract better guys or girls, who whatever you prefer. And it's all going to be worth it. Like once God really placed you in that, in that circle that's meant for you, full of love and good energy, like you can honestly look back on what you've been through and say, okay, I'm glad I went through this. Now I know how to accept genuine love and friendship and just live my best life. So that's the end of the video. I love y'all. Like, comment, and subscribe. And catch y'all next time.